Well, here's an ugly brawl. Of course you remember New Teal Independent MP Monique Ryan, who last year beat then-Treasurer Josh Frydenberg in the seat of Kuyong. Who can forget her? Can the Minister please explain how he proposes to manage the oncoming national significant burden of disability and chronic illness? Put your masks on. She's the hypocrite who was then filmed without a mask herself, even when dancing in a crowd in a closed room. She was also the one who claimed to be a political clean skin, not left, not right, no, 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 in the middle. But it turned out she was a former Labor member. And when she was elected, she hired as a chief of staff, Sally Rugg, a hard left activist from Get Up, who last worked with former Labor Prime Minister Kevin Rudd, trying to call for a Murdoch Royal Commission, effectively to muzzle conservatives like me. And back then, just six months ago, Ryan was wild about Rugg, and Rugg was wild about Ryan, saying what drew me to Monique was obviously the policy priorities, climate change, gender equity, integrity and transparency in politics. Well, forget transparency because Rugg is now suing Ryan for allegedly breaching her rights as a worker. We don't know exactly why, they won't say. Joining me is Sky News senior political reporter Trudy McIntosh. Trudy, I'm enjoying this story perhaps more than I should, but tell me, what exactly is happening here? Why, why is Ryan being sued? Well, Andrew, the details of this are actually quite scant at the moment. What we can tell you, though, is that Sally Rugg, the Chief of Staff to Monique Ryan, the member for Kuyong, has filed this legal action in the court. It happened quietly uh, just before Australia Day on the 25th of January. The details of this yet to be made public. What we do know is that there's this um, action under the Fair Work Act. There's some speculation as to about what that could mean, but we just don't know at this stage. Likely to get more information potentially this Friday when there is this first hearing into this matter. I spoke to a lawyer representing Sally Rugg today. They won't provide comment with this legal proceedings underway, but they have confirmed that, in fact, Miss Rugg is still technically employed by Dr Ryan at the moment, but there is an acting chief of staff in place. And interesting on that point, the person who's been appointed here is Nina O'Connor, and she was listed as the head of campaigns for Climate 200. That's not surprising, given that was the group that bankrolled Monique Ryan being able to unseat Josh Frydenberg. But her own political background quite interesting and one that the Liberals, you'd imagine, keen to seize on. She's a former advisor to the Greens leader, Adam Baird. So some Liberals, you'd imagine, with some <laughs> scepticism about how independent uh, Monique Ryan, in fact, is in this campaign. Oh, to think that the Greens used, uh, the uh, Teal Independents used to position themselves as, you know, people who are sort of in the middle between the two parties. It's not certainly not the case in Ryan's case. But, you know, you, you surprised me a bit because... I thought that Ryan had campaigned on being transparent. Rugg had so admired this campaign for transparency, yet it seems that neither side are being transparent in, tell, uh, in telling us what this is really all about. The official line, though, from both sides is that they are being told not to comment by their legal teams as this is yet to actually go to that first hearing in the court. And ultimately, at this stage, it's hard to tell uh, what actually is the nature of this allegation. Will we ever find out if this is settled privately outside of court? So still plenty of questions in this. And Monique Ryan won't be able to avoid them. But Parliament's back here next week. She will be asked questions about the nature of this, you'd have to imagine. Well, on two grounds. One, uh, the transparency issue. But the other thing is this. I mean, didn't Ryan last year actually demand a code of conduct to improve the workplace culture of Parliament House? Given all that, this seems rather ironic. The problem here is we have to give the benefit of the doubt, Andrew, in the sense that we just don't know the allegation. We don't know if it directly relates to Monique Ryan. She is listed as a respondent, so is the Commonwealth. But whether this relates to broader issues within the office or directly something that's gone on between the two of them, it is a pretty spectacular breakdown, you'd have to say, in the relationship. The Chief of Staff is supposed to be the closest person to the MP. That She was only employed, yeah, July last year, and we're now at the end of January and it's uh, already seemed to come to a... Uh, unhappy ending for the two of them. Oh, well, you're totally right to say we can't prejudge, but I do think, given her uh, Monique Ryan's uh, rhetoric about workplace culture and transparency, she owes an explanation. And uh, I would hope we'd get it, even if there is, as you suggest, potentially a confidential settlement. Trudy McIntosh, always great to talk to you. Thank you so much.